Hey guys, welcome to Downtown Tailoring. In today's video, we are going to make very simple alterations that are very important. Some of them are requested. So let's go. I've been asked, how do you hem a super flare pants? The first thing that I'm gonna do after I talk to the customer about the length is to pin to the floor. But the most important thing is that I will take just a reference, six inches from the floor is a good one, and I will measure on top like a six inches all the way down and at the floor too. So the two measurements will give me a confirmation of the good real measurement. Because what happened with the pants different to the dress is that when you measure it, because of the foot is just right there, sometimes the measurement tends to get a little bit complicated to the floor. That's why the six inches, it will confirm me that I did a right measurement. These pants originally were longer at the back and shorter at the front, and I'm making it straight. And what I'm doing is after I put it flat, I'm confirming that the pins are all right at the bottom. And then I am confirming as well that the six inches are okay too. And then I will just measure, you see, most of the time when those hems are like that, you will need a curve ruler. And then I will mark the length and then I will mark what I will fold it and I will just cut it out. After I cut it, I make sure to mark the hem at the other part. As you can see, this hem, I had to cut it a little bit of the hem, so I will just open and then I will go to my serger and I will search all the way around. <laughs> it's a little bit big and I do everything and then I will go to my sewing machine and I will use the trick I show you in another video of sewing knit and then I will sew my hem in a regular way. You know, when I sew the hem, I am pulling a little bit the material just to give it a little bit of flexibility. And you see, it looks really good, very straight, very nice. And I still can stretch it a little bit more. And now I'm going to my ironing board and I will iron the hem. As you can see, you are looking at kind of wave but with the iron everything will disappear and the hem will be all straight and nice it's because i am making a hem rounded and not at a straight hem you know but because that's the only way that the hem will look completely straight on the customer you see this concept is a little bit difficult to visualize because we have the tendency to think oh the hem in a pant should be a straight but it depends, always it depends. In that case, as you can see, it has to be a little bit rounded, a little bit. I'm showing you another pants that I did the same, but as you can see, it's a little bit smaller. You see this one, the original that I show you, it has more like a cone shape, but the other doesn't have like a the cone shape, it's like a more straight, so my hem, in the other is more straight than in the first one. I am doing exactly the same. I am confirming that my measurement was okay. I'm still using the curve ruler, but it won't be as rounded as the first one. You see, the first one was completely a cone, and the second one is kind of two triangles, one after the other. So I did exactly the same using my tape but in this case you see i have less ripple because uh, the hem is less rounded it's a little bit more straight the thing is that with both cases on the customer those pants will look completely straight just touching the ground all around this is a very interesting case this is a dress that is basically a plain dress and we could say that it doesn't have anything too great. And I will start with this dress to take in a little bit in the shoulders because my customer is a little bit petite. I won't do any details about it, it's just to show you. And now that is good, the armhole and everything, I will show you the real transformation that I'm gonna do on this dress. 
when the customer had it on, I pin it, I mark it in what will be the waist, and I am going to put an elastic. So I will start by marking where the pins were inside because I want to pass all the marks to the inside because I pin it outside when she was wearing it. Now that I have all my marks in, I will fold the dress in the center. So I will put center back, center front. I'm doing that because I need to balance the height of these marks because this is a horizontal mark that I did. So I want that the right side and the left side, of course, has the same height. And I'm just making sure that whatever is in one side, it will be at the other. That's very important because the body feels everything that is asymmetric. So if you don't have anything asymmetric in purpose, you really have to do it symmetric. You know what I mean? So after I pin one side, then I will go in between my two pins. So, you know, just to make sure that everything is okay. And this is my lines. As you can see, the line is not completely straight. It's curved a little bit. And this is the way I measure it. So I will trust that. And if you are pattern maker or you suffer from scratch sometimes, you will know that usually that lines is probably very proper then I will use something inside to encase the elastic you know sometimes you can just sew the elastic directly but the problem with the elastic is the measurement I measure the elastic what will be the perfect length on her and after you stitch on top of the elastic the measurement change and if you don't have the specifications it's really too hard to do it. So for me, when I'm doing alterations, I prefer to encase the elastic rather than sew it. And I'm taking some lace and I'm cutting on a stripe of lace and I'm searching both sides to finish. If I had just a piece of lace, I would have used it, but I don't. Sometimes you have to be creative because you cannot go to the fabric store all the time or anything. Now I'm marking because this measurement, as I said before, I took it to the customer, but I will change just the color. When the customer came, I just have in hand the white elastic. So I measured it with the white, but I think the black elastic will look better on her. Now I'm sewing my case. I'm going inside and I see the line and I'm making sure to go over the line that I marked. And uh, when I'm finishing the sides, I fold it, but I'm leaving just a slot so I can insert the elastic later. I'm sewing now the second side and this is how it looks at the right side. And I will just iron it to erase all the marks I did. As you can see, the seams were exactly where the original marks were. That is like a reassurance for me that I'm doing the job right. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you are working, but you really, you know, you are a little bit scared sometimes. After that, I insert the elastic and, uh, you know, the job is almost done, but not quite yet. You know that we women, we like the gathering in the waist, but we don't like it to look bulky. And the trick to eliminate the bulky in the waist and make your waist smaller is to leave the gathering just for the center. So what I'm doing is to make sure with the top stitch in the elastic about one inch and a half, I'm making that the gathering doesn't go too much at the side so it will look better on my customer. And look at that. It looks fantastic, huh? With the last step, I achieved two things at the same time. One, to have enough gathering for the center so it looks good. And the second is to highlight the silhouette of my customer so she will look with a nice waist. She will wear this dress with a silk blouse inside and I know that she will look gorgeous. My next and last project is a vintage shirt. 
The pocket on this shirt is all ripped. It's ripped all around. So I'm gonna go and I will open it. And you know, to open this kind of ripped things, you have to be really careful. So I'm pulling the thread with really a lot of care until I have enough material open so I can use comfortably my blade. And then after I have my pockets all open, I'm going to my ironing table and I will kind of smooth out all the edges and make it as close as I can. And then I'm gonna glue a cotton interfacing. This is the same interfacing I use with the jeans patch that I patch it with the thread. I don't know if you have seen this video. It's very interesting. And when my patch is done, you can see the other side is kind of trying to close it the best I can. And now I'm going to my sewing machine and I will go and sew all around, stitch, stitch to reinforce the material. I'm using the black thread for the black parts. And then when I finish with the black, I will change to the beige and I will finish all my stitches with the beige. You see, when it's all patched like that, then I can again mark a new pocket and sew it back. So this is a kind of a weld pocket. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to mark the square where the pocket is and I am trying to push it a little bit bigger than it was before so we can avoid the red part of it and I'm marking in my pocket the lines too usually I don't do it in this way but because I'm just working with what I have I will just resew it back let's say so I'm trying to match the lines and then I'm going and sew over it and I'm making sure to finish exactly where I'm supposed to be and then I will cut it and I will put it inside you know this is not the way it's supposed to be because what I do usually is to sew the whole thing first but because I'm too lazy and I didn't want it to really open the whole pocket to do it in the right way I did it that way and it worked well for me but if you want I can make a video explaining how to do this kind of pockets because they are important and they are a little tricky to do I just finished it you know I saw the other part and uh, when you look at the pocket you will never ever imagine that this pocket was ripped before and here you go guys so if you find this video useful please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe comment share bye